church on Beatty's Ford Road where a special memorial service is taking part right now for the wonderful friend of ours, Steve Crump. Uh, speaking right now, that's Bill Jones, formerly of CBS, who was a good friend of Steve's. A lot of folks attending the service there this evening. And we're on your side with tonight's cover story celebrating the life of our wonderful friend Steve Crump. And he was. What a gregarious fellow he was. What a character. What a solid journalist. Everything about him, I can't say enough positives. And those live pictures there from the memorial just once again just show how many people loved him. And he loved everyone as well. Of course, you know, Steve lost his five-year battle with cancer last week. He was a devoted and passionate journalist here in Charlotte. He also worked in Detroit for a couple of years, but came back to Charlotte because this is the area he really loved. He told stories that really mattered to you for nearly 40 years. And during that time, so many special friendships were born. Our Dedrick Russell has the story. This is a story about the best man, the groomsman, and the groom by the name of Steve Crump. They were both surprised and excited Steve was ready to tie the knot. Uh, first, I wanted to know, I'd like to meet the saint that's marrying you. <laughs> and then, and, then and, and sure enough, after having met, I said, yeah, these, these two are, are, are meant for each other. So it was just a wonderful thing to see uh, that, you know, he found a soulmate. I remember the day that he got married and um, how calm he was, and uh, as a matter of fact, we were helping him put on his uh, tuxedo jacket, and he started doing uh, singing James Brown uh, and and doing the whole please, please, please uh, thing, you know, with the cape on his back. <laughs> he was doing that with the suit jacket. Years before Steve said I do to his wife Kathy, he said yes to being friends with Bill Jones and Carl McLean. Dedrick, I met Steve when I was transferred down here from CBS News New York. My landing spot was WBTV. So uh, Crump then, my wife and son were still between our apartment in New Jersey, our house in uh, Delaware, and uh, I was here you know, by myself for a while. So Steve took me under his wing and uh, showed me who was who in Charlotte and the places to go. I've met Steve out on a story, I guess what, 40 years ago? He just walked over, and the Steve that I know always starts a conversation with a question. What's up? You know, Steve, that's how he does. And, and we became friends right then and there. Carl was a news photographer at a competing station, but that didn't stop the bomb. Steve was an extrovert, and I'm the complete opposite. I'm an introvert, you know. So... He, I was his wingman, but I never had to say anything. Through the decades of friendship, Bill and Carl's families became Steve's family, and they treated him like a relative. Listen to this story about a hospital visit involving Steve Crump as we knew him in the early years. Steve went in to see my mother in the hospital, and my mom looks at him. Now, bear in mind, this is like a 90-year-old, and she says to Steve, well, at least you aren't emaciated as I. Crump says, Jones, I have never been put down by a 90-year-old before. <laughs> People know Steve as this, as this uh, tremendous journalist, but I know Steve as a homeboy who loved a shot of bourbon, a fried croaker sandwich, you know, and he loved to laugh. I, I can hear that laugh now, that, you know, that loud, gregarious sound that came from, the, from his belly. Through the sickness, Bill was the one who drove Steve to Atlanta for treatment. They talked for hours. Basically talking about news and anything that would keep the spirits up and take the conversation away from the uh, medical situation. The whole time, he was the most forward-thinking, uh, progressive patient I have ever seen in my life. When you get older, you start really appreciating friendships, true friendships. And, and most of our conversations, especially after he got sick, was about how much we loved each other, you know? And there were many times we would start talking about, you know, the past and how far we've come and, 
you know, and then we both start crying and then he would crack a joke and we start laughing. This friendship and brotherhood, priceless. It's foundational and it also is food for the soul. Every conversation, Steve would always tell me, I love you, man. I love you, man, and I really appreciate your friendship. A friendship with memories that will live on. I know now what I'm going to miss is that phone call with the question, what's up? I'm going to miss that laugh probably more than anything else. The lesson Steve left behind for his friends of nearly 40 years. And it would be one that actually Jim Valvano said, and that would be never give up, never give up, never, ever give up. There'll never be another Steve. In Charlotte, Dedrick Russell, WBTV, on your side tonight. Mm -hmm.